morning I'm talking about um, I'm talking about what is wrong with my prayer and my faith and um, someone says <laughs> that's a very powerful topic to talk about a and the reason I'm talking about this this morning is the reason I'm talking about this is a lot of people really feel that I'm doing all I should I'm praying the way I know how to pray I am confessing the Word of God and using my faith the way I know how to do it what was wrong so they're wondering that how come with all the prayer why are my finances not changing how come with all the prayer why why am I not still married and my biggest prayer concern is to get married how come with all the prayer I'm struggling with this addiction to nicotine how come I can't break this masturbation how come I can't break this addiction how come with all the prayer how come I've not gotten an approval of the funding my rent is not coming through so they're asking the question they said okay it's one of two things is it that God is a scam and a lot of Christians have the idea that God is a scam somewhere in your heart because they're like or they're like I don't know I don't know how to do it or God doesn't like me and most people settle for the fact that God doesn't like me because in their mind God is faithful and they know that but God doesn't like me and let me say something to you the moment you believe in your heart that God doesn't like you good things will never flow to you spiritually and that's why I tell you to say it often and, and the reason why is that the people the people that come to church but in your subconscious you really believe that God doesn't love you you really believe that you, in fact let me tell you how you know I get all those prayer requests from people and people say things like in fact I think there's one I want to read to you I, I saw it and I was so uh, I felt really bad you know I, I felt so bad I wanted to reply to the person but I just didn't know if that would help the person I want to re I think it's online I'm not sure if I can find it you know prayer find it and and, and we posted the text yeah I found it so this person I posted a testimony of someone that got engaged and this person posted it online and this is when I posted of the ring someone in that one getting engaged. Say, congratulations that you have found joy congratulations that you have found love why I wallow in shame deceit and pain I cried to a Christ who has abandoned me to suffer in disgust while I cry in bitterness to a situation in which I find myself helpless I hope to meet you all in the next world someday forget me ignore me I'm the worst person on the earth I am taking the sniper. I regret the day I met Christ. He hasn't been of importance. Suicide is the only remedy to my, to my unique problems. See, let me say something to you. Of course, this, can mean, this means nothing to me. And when I say it means nothing to me, it's not as if the person does not mean nothing to me. But the way the person is writing, it might just be a crook looking for attention. That's the first thing. That's why I say it means nothing to me. But if this person has a genuine problem, you know what I'm going to tell him? The major thing is this. What do you believe? If you use your physical circumstances to interpret God's love, you will always be on the wrong side of life. And let me prove it to you. When you were young, there were steps your mother, your father took. And when they took those steps, you felt for some time that those were not your real parents. Because you thought if they were your real parents, they would not behave in certain ways. Yes or no? When you grew up, did you understand what they were doing? Yes. Exactly. There are sometimes you wonder why is God responding this way and not this way. As you grow, you begin to appreciate the wisdom of God. But if, at, do you know there were people that it was from that age that they had something against their parents and the relationship between them and their parents began to grow wider and wider and wider that up till now, you know they look back they understand but a lot has been destroyed and I'm saying so because a lot of people just imagine this conversation I really feel for this guy but how can someone say you it's not even let me tell you he's so bitter 
He's bitter against people that have good news. His, the, his perspective of life is so negative. And when people are here, it's always something that leads them to this position. Nobody gets here automatically. And most people that are like this are mostly people that really tried to pray before, have been very involved in church before, and they just fall off. And, and they say, where, where is God? Where is the baby? Where is God when my brother died? Where is God when I wanted a job? Where is God when I lost my capital? Listen to me. Every time you ask such questions, you always make it seem as if your miracles are fluke. As if, if, God, if something goes wrong, God cannot do another one. I, I remember a lady told me, he said, Pastor Bolaji, I got pregnant after a long time, but I'm glad to die. He said, I'm so down, I lost the baby. And I said, my sister, I feel your pain. But your miracle was not a fluke. If God did it again, he would do it again. What does that mean? If you lost the baby and you know it's not luck, God will do it again. So the reason why whatever goes wrong, I'm not perturbed is this. There's nothing that goes wrong that God cannot correct. Oh, you didn't hear that. There's nothing that goes wrong that God cannot correct. There's nothing because it got the whole world in his hands. Glory to God. So the people are asking questions and saying that, I've been praying, but my business has not grown beyond 10 million annually. I've been praying, my, my finance has not grown beyond 25 million annually. I've been praying, I've not been able to earn more than $50,000 annually. And they say, what exactly is the problem? Is it? Is it my prayer? So the first thing is this. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 1, the Bible says God is light. In whom there's no darkness or variable of turning. That means God does not oscillate. God does not do bad today and do good tomorrow. It's difficult to follow a God that does good today and does bad tomorrow. God is constant. So what could be wrong is two things. Either your faith or your prayers. But now, let's turn to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Verse 20. Galatians chapter 2. In verse 20. This is good. Because one of the things I've heard charismatic Pentecostals talk about is that, oh, you, you don't get healed. It's your faith. It's your faith. And faith, so people say that, is it, I'm trying to have faith. I'm trying to have faith. All, all of us now begin to try to have faith. And let me just say this clearly here. Everybody look at me. There is no child of God that has a faith problem. There is no child of God that does not have enough faith. I know that some people say, your faith is not enough. You can be a Christian and your faith is not enough. Your faith is enough. Because there's this thing that just makes us look down on ourselves. I don't have enough faith. I don't have enough anointing. I don't have enough this. And meanwhile, you have all those things. Is it possible for a Christian to have enough faith? Impossible. Galatians chapter 2. You are not in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, it was possible for them not to have enough faith. How do I know? Jesus will speak of someone. I will say that, oh, your faith. But all those people were not born again. In Acts chapter 2, something was different. We receive the Holy Spirit, not just the Holy Spirit. We receive salvation, not just salvation. We receive the faith of Jesus. So, if you say you don't have enough faith, that means the faith of Jesus is not sufficient. You have enough faith to get pregnant. You have enough faith to grow the business to 200 million annually. You have enough faith to move to the next level. You have enough faith. The reason why you said you don't have enough faith is because you have always said so. Let's see what the Bible says. Someone says, but the Bible, God says your faith, listen to me, read through your Bible. After, after the epistles, sorry, after the synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's no mention that the Christians did not have faith. There is no mention that Christians do not have faith. And what's the difference? Because the people just Christ ministered to in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were believers of the message, but they were not born again. They did not have the Holy Spirit and they have not received faith. But Ephesians 2 8 says, We've been saved by grace, which is of faith, and all of it, it is the will of God. How can God give you faith and your faith is imperfect? Does God give out imperfect gifts? Said so my faith is working. So Galatians chapter 2. I want to show you what your faith is made of like. Oh, glory to God. 
Ooh, ooh. Verse 20. Hey, are you ready for this? Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I live in the flesh. What does this say? I live by what? The faith of who? Where is he? He says, the faith I have today is the faith of Jesus Christ. My faith is not counterfeit. The same faith that Jesus Christ used to raise Lazarus back from the dead. The same faith that Jesus Christ used to put money in the mouth of the fish. The same faith that he used to multiply five loaves to feed several thousands. He says, that is the exact faith faith that i have i do not have a faith problem my faith can get a job my faith can move a mountain my faith can expand my finance my faith can break an addiction my faith can attract a spouse my faith can walk and you know the thing about faith the faith is always working the bible says in the book of james faith works by love the way god describes faith is this he said faith works faith is always working first john chapter 5 verse 4 he said this is the victory that overcomes the world even my faith my faith overcomes coronavirus my faith overcomes poverty my faith overcomes limitation my faith overcomes the lack of funding my faith is a world-class faith it's the jesus kind of faith somebody say amen, amen. the reason i'm saying this to you is this i need you to begin to have faith in your faith <laughs> that's that's so powerful you need to begin to have faith in your faith this is powerful oh glory to god so what's wrong with my faith and prayer so there's nothing wrong with god that's wrong with my faith could it be my prayer it could be your prayer you have perfect faith the only reason why your faith will not work is this for two reasons number one you don't know how to use it that's majority of the reason so it says is it possible to have faith i don't know how to use of course the bible speaks of a man that was listening to paul and the man was paralyzed and the bible says and paul perceiving he has faith told him to rise up do you know the man did not even know he had the faith to rise up it was Paul that perceived and told him to rise up. Do you know many of you are doing business at 20 million level and you have faith for 50 million, but you don't know? And it takes a teaching that will push you and say, hey, move to the next level. Do you know many of you, many of you feel as if I'm just impotent where I am and meanwhile you have enough faith to rise up. And Paul said, rise up. So, when it comes to the believer, the believer has no faith problem. He may have a problem on how to use his faith. So, you need to learn faith and use his faith to become very good at it. What about prayer? So, when a believer has faith problem, it's not really faith problem. The only thing that can hinder the faith of a believer also is what? Is his belief system. I need a bottle of water. Maybe empty. Empty. Not, not the water, it's just empty. It's his belief system. The second thing is this what's wrong with my prayer your prayer can be wrong why can your prayer be wrong listen to me wrong believing will bring wrong thinking thank you sir wrong believing will bring wrong thinking wrong thinking will lead to wrong prayers so let me tell you what people do people say things like father rebuke the devil for my sake why do you say that because you think you don't have the authority to address the powerful devil after all, the devil has shown you all your life. So you now say, Lord, rebuke the devil for my sake. That's what you think. So, wrong believing because of how does wrong believing come? Wrong believing comes based on what? Wrong teaching. And that's why who you listen to, the church you go really matters a lot. You can be going to two, three churches together, two, three prayer meetings together. It's going to confuse your thinking. Because you're going to have what I call spiritual constipation and you don't know where the poisoning came from. Is it from Mr. Biggs or McDonald's? So, wrong teaching leads to wrong believing. Wrong believing leads to wrong um, reactions. Wrong actions leads to wrong prayers. 
Some people even pray as if God is your problem. They say, God, why are you looking at me like this? Why are you praying as if God is your problem? Glory to God. So, the reason why your prayer may be wrong, and James 1 says, you ask and receive not because you ask and miss. Your asking is wrong. And that's what makes the prayer. Your asking is wrong. So, let me explain this to you. This is what believing is like. Believing is negative or positive, depending on what it is. A negative belief system is negative. Unfortunately, faith rests on believing. So, once your believing is negative, your faith will be negative because something's wrong with your believing. Once your believing is negative, your prayer will be negative because everything rests on your believing. So, what does believing really do? This is what it does. It says all things are possible to him that believes. What does that mean? Your belief is the container that determines how much God can do in your life. Your prayer is a reflection of what you believe. Your faith is a reflection of what you believe. It says all things are possible to him that believes it. So let's get into this. This is a very long introduction. Who praise God. I say praise God. Hallelujah. I say praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 2. The Bible says, Unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them, but the word did not profit them. It didn't, it, it didn't make any difference. Why didn't the word profit them? The Bible says, because it was not mixed with faith in them that had it. So, when the Bible says, it was not mixed with faith in them that had it. Let's understand what it means when it says, it wasn't mixed with faith. Verse 3 says, for we which have believed. Did you see that? So, the mixing with faith had to do with the believing. So, let's so today what i want to talk about really is this i'm focusing on the belief so when you say what is wrong with my faith it has to do with your belief system when you say why is my prayer not working it has to do with your belief system most of the time so let me show you some things so the bible say here these people had the word of god or another way to say it is that these people participated in a spiritual activity but it did not bring about results because of their faith this people sowed a special seed but it did not bring about the right result because of their faith this people embarked on the three days fasting and prayer he did not bring about the right result because of how they believe this people you know gave they confessed the word of god he did not bring about any result because of their what believe so what does your belief do to you mark chapter 9 verse 23 mark chapter 9 verse 23 Glory to God. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Oh, hallelujah. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Are you there? Let's read together once ago. The first thing is this. What you believe determines what's possible to you. Not what you want. Not what you desire. What see them ever look at me oh my god i can desire something but i may not believe for that thing that's why the bible says the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short not what the righteous desire is the expectation the expectation is the belief system i can desire see i can desire that i want to get married but deep on the inside of me I will ask myself who will marry me I can desire many people desire let me tell you something there eh? many people desire financial breakthrough yes or no yes, write them a check of 500,000 I say are you playing with me <laughs> what is are you playing with me because although they desire 500 K their mind does not believe it can happen to them and guess what even when they have a temp a miracle 
that expands them financially is always temporary because you will always be reduced to the level of your believing. You will always be reduced to the level of your believing. The first thing about believing, the first thing about believing is this. What's the first thing about believing? That your believing determines what is possible. It determines what is possible to you. Mark chapter 9 verse 22. It says all things are possible to him that believe it. It determines what is possible to you. For example, I, I tell you an example. I'm working on a project and it's a lot of money. And someone says, what should we do? I say, just wait. So the person says, what, what do you think we should do? I say, just wait. And people don't understand when I say wait because some of them are trying to take instruction. And the reason why is this. I'm waiting for my inner being to swallow it. Because once I can capture it on the inside, it's only a matter of time on the outside I will win it. What happens to most people is this. They are attempting things they don't believe can happen to them. It ends in frustration. So let me say, when I say, write a financial goal, they say, I believe God for 100 million. Even your mind knows that you don't know what it means. You know the thing about believing? Once your mind does not even know what you are... See, you don't understand. Many of you don't... Some say, I'm believing for one billion. Your mind does not even understand. Because for you to understand what one billion is, it's like you stay in Nigeria, you have never traveled before, they say snow. You don't even know what snow is. You could have seen what it looks like. You don't know what they say. There's a snow wave. You can have read about it, but you have not expressed it. So you will see... And let me say something to you. This is how it works. Why did I dress this way today? I wore a pink shirt, a gray suit, and a, 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 a pair of trousers. The reason why is that because when I dressed up, my mind told me for my belief system, this is a nice way to dress. Why does a madman walk naked? His belief system tells him that he's well dressed. You will always act according to what you believe. That's why when you see a madman, he's stuck naked and his belief system tells him that he's well dressed. He goes, yes, 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 yes. Eh, eh. Ah, I'm not so fine. You know, and he's stuck mad. Stuck naked. But his belief system, because something has gone wrong with mind. What does that mean? This is why your belief system is so powerful. You would act every day, not in line with what you want. You will act every day in line with what you believe. So it's amazing because can I get two people that have similar height and maybe up similar, wearing similar things, maybe two people in the choir wearing similar things, similar height. Please, two of you should come. Similar height, similar, yeah, wearing similar things. This is it, this is it, this is it. I, I, want, I want to help somebody today. Stand here, back each other, back each other, back each other. Exactly, thank you, Dalby. Back each other. This is what happens to you. This is what you want. This is what you believe. Guess what? It's what you believe that takes you to anywhere you're going. Despite what you want. The, you know, and I'm saying so because you will act consistently with what you believe. So, in you, in your person, there is two of you. There's what you want and there's what you believe. Let me give an example. There's a guy that wants to be doing business deal at 100 million. Who is that person? Wave your hands, let me see you. Wave your hands. Do you see this? You, 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 you see now? You see? They, you know why? Because all of a sudden, their belief system say, come on, put your hands. What do you want to do? Are you worth it? Are you seeing? See, just see it walking in church. I've never even gone anywhere. I've never even gone anywhere. Because when I say, someone's 200 million, the logical mind, desire, the one that they can control went, yes, me. Then belief that knows that they don't have capacity, will you stop that thing? He said, put your hand. So they went, they went, they went like this. They went like this. Where are the people that said they want to make a hundred million? Can you stand up, please? You see now? Okay, I want I want three of you to come to the stage. Did you see now? They began to stand up. You, you can go back, you can go back, you can go back, you can go back. You can go back. See, I'm only showing you something. How come? How come? If I now go like show me how much you have in your account, so we just sit down finally. Ah! You know why? Because because your belief is because this and this is what happens in life. You know what you want. As you go through the challenges of life that will make you happen, that will make those things happen, 
you start dropping what you want because you don't believe it. As you go to one stage, to the other stage, to the other stage, hey, like, oh, I didn't want to let me know again. Well, uh, uh, I can settle for two. Uh, I can settle for two. Ultimately, you will settle for what you believe you can have. So I'm teaching you. So this is your belief. This is belief. This is desire. Desire is within your control. You can tell what you want. Belief is subconscious. You, you don't even know what it is. The only problem is this. Can you interlock your hands? Yeah. And I wanted to follow, but I must see. So follow. Belief drags you everywhere. No matter what you desire, your beliefs drags you everywhere. You can come back. You can come back. Your belief drags you everywhere. The thing is this. Most of you are hoping that your desire will drag your belief. If you want to go... So, the, in fact, the worst people are the people that there is not a struggle. Or you're talking about struggling to for who will drag. See, you see? You will see three months, their income will go boom to desire. Then belief will take it back six months again. The reason why is that... And this is the worst because their belief system and their desires have not aligned together. Hold on. Listen to me, everybody. This was what happened to Israel. In their desire, we don't want to be slaves again. They were praying and crying, let's go to promised land. When they were going to promised land, what happened? They told Moses, we prefer the cucumber of Egypt. We prefer what? The garlic of, of, of Egypt. Let's go back because their belief system become to come out. Back to my question again. I'm, I want to show you how this works practically. So this song that says, I want to make a hundred million. Everybody look up here. That's the desire. Desire says I want to make a hundred million, right? So, he wants to make a hundred million. So, to make a hundred million annually, you have to take one or two steps. Yes or no? Okay. Try to take the steps. Believe will not allow you. That's what the problem is. Although you this because for you to spend a hundred million, maybe you have to spend five million on marketing. Ah! The belief say five million. Ah! <laughs> No, no, and the reason why you cannot spend the five million is that although and, and listen, eh, those are the steps you need to take to get the hundred, you have to spend the five million. And though you believe you want to achieve it, you'll find yourself going back, and you'll find yourself going back because of what your belief does not agree with you. So, this is what it is this is what it is your desire. Is your current capacity and beliefs is what you are right now. Your belief, sorry, your, your desire is what you want to be in the future. That's who you in the future. Your belief is your current person. The moment you keep behaving in your current state for a future result, you can never have the future result. But what your belief does is that when your belief changes, you begin to behave in your current state as though the future result is a reality. And that's what we call faith. That's very deep. You need to buy the tapes. I'm telling you, you need to buy the tapes and listen over and over again. Because this one says, I want a hundred million. But that's not the way you think right now. So it's difficult of you to invest five million in marketing. Because in your natural state, you cannot. It's a difficult thing. To make a hundred million, I need to put five million in marketing. I need two staffs that will be paying a maximum amount of salaries of about maybe five staffs, about 8.5 million. With that in place, I'll make a hundred million. The reason why you don't make a hundred million is not, is not because you don't want to make it, but because there are steps you have to take. But the moment you don't believe, you will not be able to take those steps. You don't believe, you will not be able to do it. And that's why when I pray for the sick, the first thing I do for them is that do what you could not do before. Look around. People that don't do anything, they don't even know they are healed. You know why they don't do anything? Because in their mind, what have I received right now that will make me do what I could not do before? Because their desire is still overpowering their belief. Did you get it? Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Are you seeing something this morning? Should we apply this to relationships? Have you not seen girls that want to get married? We say, oh, there's a singles connect. They say, I'm not coming. Because their desire is marriage, but their belief is that, you know why they don't want to come? Why they are not coming is that, who is there that wants to marry me? 
Nobody that is there. I don't have anybody that is there that wants to marry. Because if you know your husband is there, you will go there. If you know your wife is there, you will go there. But you know why you don't go there? Because although you really want to get married, you're like, <laughs> who is there that wants to marry me? Who is there? So, in your desire, what one desire, you see your desire saying that, I want to get married. I'm fasting to get married. But now, take steps towards your, take steps towards it. You can't take steps. You even tell the lady, ah, no, dress up now, look very fine. You know you are going to church. I beg, I beg, I can't keep myself up. Anybody that cannot see me and marry me this way, let them go and keep themselves. You are just laughing, but is it not true? Look for those I've been looking for just for a long time. Ask them when they do apply. They will say, I'm tired of applying. I want to ask you, which will apply the more? You ask someone that is not doing financially, you say, open an account. He said that, ah, is that the first thing? He doesn't even understand that you're trying to help him. You say, open an account. He says, is that the first thing? And I'm saying this because, first of all, belief determines what is possible to you. Let me begin to round this up. How does God change people? Oh. The first thing God does is to begin to change how they see things. So, Abraham was going to have a child. Ten years passed, twenty years passed. Abraham got to a point to say, God, just tell me the truth. I, I, I'm not going to have a child again. And that's what many of you are. Just tell me the truth. I'm not going to get, you're not going to answer this prayer. Just tell me the truth. Then you know what God did to him? God said, Abraham, come. Because God saw that Abraham was struggling to believe. What did I say? Abraham was what? Struggling to believe. God says, Abraham, come. He says, look at the stars. We are start counting. It was an all night affair from 6 p.m. to 4 a.m. One, one point eight, one point four, one. He will miss it again and said, "Okay, uh, let's start again." One, two. You know what God was doing to him? God, when he finished counting, God says, "That's how many your all the things you've counted are all your children." What was God trying to do? God says, "If I don't change the belief system of Abraham, I would not be able to bless him." So God says, "Let me look for something in the physical that would help him change his belief system." So that it can open up his mind and have a miracle. That's the same reason why I told you to write the letter of joy. You know why? For the first time in your life, you will be able to, ex if you wrote the letter of joy very well, as you are writing it, something will be going on in your life. The reason why is that as you are writing and reading it, there will be spiritual warfare. I'm telling you. There will be spiritual warfare. Like, hey my God, have you written a check to yourself for five million naira and you have never had it before? When you write it to yourself, you know why? Your mind is doing, oh my God. <sighs> but you know it's you that wrote it. And what we're doing is this. Because you can come to church and your belief does not change. What we're doing is this. The same thing God would do Abraham. You use a physical representation to change the belief system. And the same thing we do when we confess the word of God in the mornings. In the mornings, the things I want to be and have in the mornings, I get up, and that's why this three days fasting and prayer in the evenings we will not be praying, we'll be confessing. You'll just be declaring it. All the goals you'll be declaring. It. The reason why is that the moment you begin to declare, it, not I want, the moment you say, I have, I am, I have, I am, I have, I am. What will happen to you is this it will begin to dawn on your spirit, your belief will begin to expand. Let me say something to you, and I will close from here. Many people are used to poverty than prosperity. A lot of single people have the idea of scarcity than abundance. What do I mean? Great guys are scarce to find. Great girls are scarce to find. People that married girls. For example, if you talk, listen to me. If you really think great guys and girls are scarce to find, tell me. I have loads of people that want to get married that are looking for people. 
How many of you know that? Raise up your hands. You have lots of people, guys and girls, are looking for someone to marry. Wave your hands. Let me see. Look at that. But why do you think they are trying to? Because the law of belief. You don't see life the way it is. You see what you believe. That's the law of belief. You don't see life the way it is. You see what you believe. I believe that the easiest thing to have in your life is a miracle. So I say, Pastor, I believe so. How do I know that? Because my God is good and kind to me. He's always trying to bless me in ways I can't imagine. God is always telling me this business ideas. He's always asking someone, send him some money. He's always asking someone, bless him financially. He's always telling someone, why not do this business deal? Why not get him involved in this? Someone wrote me last week. He said, Pastor Balaji, I run a company. It's, over, it's worth over a billion. I want to be on the board. I will give you 2.5%. I said, my God. Why does... Because someone says... Because, and you know, it's not just what you get once, it's what you get in a lifetime. I said, God is good and kind to me. And the reason I'm saying so is this. As you come to church right now, this teaching might be too small to change your belief. Because some of you have had the belief for five years, ten years. Some of you were brought up with it. You were brought up to think poverty is natural. Let me tell you something. There's enough money in this world to make everyone a millionaire. I hope you know that. And on mocks is what? How much, my brother? How much is it what? Almost over a hundred or two hundred billion. About two hundred billion. Billion, right? Million or billion? Billion or million? Billion. Does that mean if he gives every human being one billion dollar, he will still have more left? What? At least, if he gives us ten hundred, so if he gives every human being one million dollars. He will still have more money left. If he gives every human being one, if one man chooses to give all of us one million dollars, you will still have left. And you say there's not enough money in this world, you must be drinking champagne. We've not said the richest hundred people, we just said one person. And the reason why, so if Elon Musk decides one man can make the whole world millionaires, one man, you know what one million dollars is? That's 500 million naira. And if the man gives all of us, he's still a billionaire. And someone says, there's not enough to go around. Really? But they need you to believe that so that you can be poor. All of you that are here, and you feel as if all I can do is fraud to get by. I understand. And it's true. You know why it's true for you? Because that's the way you think. That's why you've not found any other way. The moment you decide that I can do something else more than this to get by, it's simple. If you look at your life and say, all I can make in a year is 10 million naira, you're correct. If you look at your life and say, my mind can never work, you're correct. Because what you believe is correct to you. is the way you see it. But if you just look at yourself and say, you know what? I can easily make a hundred million dollars a year. It will change. You know what? The thing about belief is that it's not right or wrong. It's up to you. I want to ask you, is salad, is salad delicious or flat? Tell me. Delicious or flat? You see, it depends on you. Some people say food is peppery or not peppery. It depends on you. No food has permanent taste. It's who is tasting it. So, there's no money. It depends on you. All I know that, my God, is good and kind to me. All I know that my cup run it over. End of this year, I will have more than I had beginning of this year. All I know that there are more jobs for you to occupy than what you currently have. All I know that men are rushing you to marry you. All I know that great women are coming to you with full speed. All I know that everything is working towards your advancement. That's what I know. Praise God. My cup. My Lord. See, I want to ask you, what's the difference between your desire and beliefs and i'm saying that you need to change it how do you change it gradually how do you change it the first thing is this i just told you how begin to create visual image of what you want 
Buy a khaki order, hold it. Put put a baby cot. Some say oh, I have a baby cot, but put it in the room. What kind of room? Put it in the city room. So that as soon as your friend comes, ah, you have a baby now. You say I have oh. That's why I told you, right on your status, my letter of congratulation has come. You know what? There's something. And when they began to congratulate, what happened to you? You were received. Something was changing. Something. And do you know I've received close to 50 testimonies about letters of congratulations? Ah! Because you're correct. This, this, this same thing is what happens when we say we should give that an offering. You know why you cannot give? It's not enough. Ah! You want to give offering of 5,000. Are you mad? That's what your, 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 your logical man said. I. Your logical mind said, give, you know, because you know it's to give. So, you see. That, and that's why you tight up and down. Because your logical mind, once they preach a path message on tight, you say, yeah, let's tight. Then, your belief you say, I'm, when I, I'm warning you. you. You know that we are broke. Stop behaving like those that are rich. Don't stop behaving like people that can give 10% or give 5,000 an offering and walk away. You say, it's true. Then, return back to position. Is that not what happens? So you know, what oh, oh Lord, what am I inconsistent? Because in your heart you believe that you don't have. And people that give are those that they know that they are blessed. That's why when you give, you know, I'm so blessed. I have so much. It's so working out for me. Even this one is releasing more blessing in my life. Let's pray.